welcome back to my channel. This is your first time here, you are welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back to my channel. If you watched at least two to three videos at this point, you should have subscribed to this channel because you definitely enjoy what you're seeing over here. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Okay? And on this channel, we'll talk about skincare, lifestyle, beauty, and everything in between. And when you see me sit down like this, just know we're about to have um, you know, an in-depth conversation, um, an in-depth conversation about um, beauty products or something of some sort. Okay, so if my light seems very poor, very sorry about that. Um, I'm having some lighting issues, but I can, I guess you can see me. Okay, so let's just get right into this video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about four powders in depth. These powders are very famous in the beauty industry. You see videos, we put them in, and sometimes you wonder why we're we using these powders. Some people say waste of powders or what the function of these powders. So today I'm going to be telling you about them. Okay? And these four powders today are the first on my list is Tranexamic Acid Powder. That's the first one on my list. The Sepi White Powder. Uh, Alantoin powder and Giga White powder. So those are the powders I'm going to be talking about today. So the first one, like I said, is the Tranexamic Acid powder. This powder is a uh, synthetic powder. These powders I just listed are all synthetic powders. And when we say synthetic, we mean powders that have been formulated in the lab by chemists and they're not natural occurring powders such as hibiscus powder, bearberry powder, um sandalwood powder and all those powders these are synthetic grade powders these are you know active powders that have been formulated in um a, a, a lab of some sort okay so just as a quick background i'm going to be talking about the powders in depth their functions their ph level their suitability so if you're someone who is definitely looking into using some of these powders. This is a very important video for you to watch. And I would recommend you get a pen and paper and then you write this down because these are things that people pay a lot of amount of money to learn and you are getting them for little to nothing. So I think you should get a pen and paper, okay? Right now, the first one is the Tranexamic powder, acid powder. This is an advanced skin whitening powder. Like said it is very effective when used with other ingredients okay some of these powders are more effective when they are used with other skin lightening powders using them alone you might not experience you know the effectiveness of these powders also you also want to be careful because some of these powders are not compatible and that is um, a lesson for another day however this powder is compatible with sepi whites alpha abutin giga white vitamin c l glycerol kojic acid and kojic dip okay so i think for my experience and using of powders i would say powders like sepi white alpha abutin giga white glutathione kojic acid um, and the rest of them they tend to work well together so those are usually the safe safest bets when using some of these powders okay so with this powder you want to make sure that whatever you're mixing doesn't have lactic acid in it because it doesn't do well it will cause skin irritation and it will affect the ph balance of that product so you want to make sure that whatever you're using tranexamic acid with powder or whatever it is you're using, it doesn't contain lactic acid so note that this powder doesn't work good with lactic acid okay now with this powder at the same time i do talk about a lot about base creams my base cream is the barest minimum like i use the basic things for base creams i try not to add any additives into it just yet because sometimes if you make a large quantity of base cream and you put those additives inside it's as good as void because you can't mix certain things inside for example some people mix lactic acid in their base creams because they feel like oh it's due to exfoliation and shed skin and all of that but even for some people's face creams lactic acid doesn't work well with certain ingredients so tranexamic acid is one of those powders that is very good for face creams and body creams but if you put it in the base cream that already has lactic acid it can cause skin irritation so i think when you're making your base cream make it to the barest minimum 
make sure you're not adding any actives in it let's say you're mixing it for something then you can now go about adding your actives okay so like i said when you're using this you want to apply it in bits so you don't want to apply it all at the same time okay that is the science behind this product okay now also this product you cannot use longer than six months because after six months sometimes it loses its potency or it becomes non-existent in the product okay so this product is oil soluble it is not soluble in water so this is strictly oil soluble and you can dissolve this in oil that was dissolve it in glycerin or regular vegetable oil it will dissolve in those okay and i'm excited to make it a face cream very soon where i'm going to combine it niacinamide and examic acid together to uh for face cream. so I, i'm definitely going to share with you guys what that looks like okay and its usage rate is between two to five percent most of these powders their usage rates are two to five percent if you use anything less than two percent it's not going to be effective and if you use more than five percent it's not going to be effective so there's a usage rate okay one of those days where you just put in one tablespoon put in one day spoon that no skincare has gone beyond that there are now formulations and recipes and percentages so you need to know the percentage of the powder when you are using it okay another um thing about tranexamic acid is you need to store it in a cool dry place because if you store it in a wet damp area it will form like a solid form it will be very difficult for it to break so that is something you need to know about um tranexamic acid powder and it's one of the best powders out there this powder as little as five grams can go for two thousand there that's the way how effective this is okay that is one powder that you definitely want to try using in your formulations, okay? All right, the next powder on my list is the Sepi White Powder. This is another very famous powder. It is on the affordable side as well. Um, whereas for example, it is very, very expensive. Sepi White Powder is also known as Undercyclinol Phenylalanine. I'm going to put the uh, name up there it is a gold standard ingredient in the skin lightening industry so this sepi white is one of the best whitening powders in the skin lightening industry okay it's one of the safest alternatives to hydroquinone because a lot of people are scared of hydroquinone you know anything you know even when hydroquinone is not that bad when you just say hydroquinone people take off so it's uh, an affordable and one of the safest alternatives to hydroquinone, just like alpha arbutin. It is compatible with Giga White, alpha arbutin, glutathione, kojic acid, and kojic D. Okay, like I said, those powders has, they all are compatible and one of the safest powders to use together. Okay, it is highly stable, so you don't be scared, it's not going to disappear after a period of time. It's highly stable. It is great for anti aging as well. And then its pH is between 5 to 7, so it is on the regular skin um, pH level and then towards the alkaline level, okay? And then it is soluble in only oil. So this is a very oil-soluble powder. It's not soluble in water. Don't use this in water. For late products, you notice that your powders are not dissolving or are not mixing properly. That's because they are not, you didn't dissolve them in whatever you're supposed to be dissolving. So this is an oil soluble powder. Okay. Its usage rate is still two to five percent, just like I said, other powders as well. It lightens the skin as early as one to six weeks of consistent usage. So that is how good sepi white powder is. Sepi white powder you can get I think about fifty gram for three five four thousand naira with sepi white powders. Okay. The next powder on my list is the Alantoin powder. This is one powder that I have mixed feelings about in terms of um, solubility. It could be maybe it's not good Alantoin or the product you dissolve it in is not all that. Um, but it's still a very, very good skin lightening powder. It is um, 
Alantoid powder is white, odorless, crystalline, and most crystalline powders, you definitely want to make sure that the degree of water, so when you hold boil water, it's 100 degrees Celsius and above, okay? You don't want to use too hot water to dissolve this powder. You don't want to use too lukewarm or cold water to dissolve this powder. The, the degree for dissolving this powder is 120 degree, degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to make sure that that is the degree of water before you dissolve this powder. Okay? It is an excellent powder for anti-skin irritation and moisturizing so it's going to moisturize and also help with irritations on the skin it protects the skin as well so this product definitely doesn't really do a lot of lightening as well but helps with moisturization and protecting the skin barrier of some sort okay also helps with skin regeneration also with anti-aging and helps to reduce skin damage when you're using this powder in your product okay its usage rate is between 0.5 to 2 percent so this is one of those powders that you don't want to use more than two percent okay that's why it's very important for you to know the usage rates of your powders its ph is 4.0 to 6 so it's on the acidic side thereby moving a little bit into the you know the the neutral scale where our skin tends to fall into so it might be good um and maintain the pH balance of your formulation. <coughs> Excuse me. It is also only soluble in water. Like I said, has to be 140 degrees very hard. You have to convert that into Celsius for you to know um, what degree of Celsius that is. I think I will leave that on the screen. Okay. You need to keep this away from the sun. Like I said, it doesn't like sunlight. Most of these powders do not like sunlight. Okay. And the last powder on my list is Giga White Powder. Now, Giga White Powder is very, very, very potent. Giga White Powder is very, very potent and is used by a lot of formulators. Okay? It is a highly potent skin lightening powder that minimizes pigmentation and gives the skin a natural, luminous look and feel. Okay? So, this powder will be very good for body creams and for face creams as well. It is used in lotions and creams. When used with sepi white and other powders, the lightning effects are much more prominent. So you see a lot of people use giga white and sepi white powder together. You're wondering why are they always using that? Because those two powders combined together does a very good job. Okay. It is also compatible with vitamin C, alpha abetin, glutathione, kojic dip, and kojic acid. Okay. Now, a lot of people might wonder, what's the difference between kojic and kojic dip? Kojic is, you know, the regular um, kojic acid, and kojic dip is, because kojic acid is not very stable, they went on to formulate kojic dip, which is much, that's kojic dip, um, the pipe permit, the uh, palmitate. It is much more um, stable than the regular kojic, because if you use regular kojic, you notice that your product begins to turn orangish, yellowish. After a period of time, even when they use um, um tocopherol, that's vitamin E, to stabilize it, it's still going to change. It doesn't really do much because it's not very stable. Okay, um, yeah, so that's why people sometimes go for kojic dip because it's much more stable. Kojic acid is better used in soaps because those are washing products. Okay? Its usage rate is between two to five percent. Okay, it is pH is three to six. It is on the acidic side and naturally like gearing to the uh, neutral skin. So you know how that's going to be the pH of the product. Also, um, the solubility, it is soluble in water. So um, Giga White and Alantoin powder, other two powders, um, four powders I mentioned, are soluble in water, strictly soluble in water. I would also say make sure when i say water they mean distilled water or hydrosol please make sure your hydrosol is on the warm side if you can even go ahead to double boil that that will also be good. just make sure that your powder is properly dissolved Giga white is one of the favorite powder to use to work with in terms of um, formulations okay so those are four powders that i wanted to share with you guys today 
if you are interested in our ebook we have ebooks that give you more information about other powders usage rates and all of that as well as giving you in-depth behind in-depth information behind some of these products and powders and just helping you to save costs when you're mixing your products and also help you not to you know, waste powders and waste things like that because you just fail to understand the usage rates and you know more information about them okay so that is that in this video today i hope you had a pen on paper and you can always visit this video of course to you know take down notes about these powders so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in my next video bye